Gurth Machnata Schleith, the milk marketing board, as we would call it, have a milk factory, a big creamery at Pont Llanio, the bridge over the River Tyvee, a few miles south of Trigaran, where I stay. Now, it's my custom on opening day to pour a libation into the river I intend to fish. And on this occasion, I got hold of some of that famous Welsh cider they call scrumpo. And very, very bitter acid stuff it was, so much so that I thought we'd give the river a very generous libation indeed. I didn't covet it for myself on this wicked day. There really was a very bitter wind, and there was driving, lashing rain, and long before I began to fish even, a lot of this rain was penetrating, getting down my neck, soaking from my hair, and generally making me feel very cold and uncomfortable. And spring was very late in Cardiganshire this year. Everything seemed black. The thorn hedges were bare. But at least the water, so far at any rate, was fairly low and quite clear. Now it's this low, clear water that the fly fisherman wants on these very early rivers. If you get a lot of rain at this time of the year, these sort of rivers discolour very badly. They come up in brown flood, and this is quite hopeless for fly fishing. And on a hedge nearby, a sparrow hawk, very wet and looking the picture of dejection don't often see sparrow hawks about now they become quite rare and the sheep and lambs huddling under the lee of banks and hedgerows nobody about the whole place deserted except for one mad englishman who astonished even the hardy native sparrow hawk when at last i managed to hook a fish that was more than even he could stand well i think i was very lucky indeed to get this fish on such a day. The river was getting up, it was discolouring, and for my part, having got that one, I was satisfied. And I made my way back to Pont Lanio because what I had in mind was to try and warm myself up with some tea. I thought, well, I'll knock off now while fortune has turned in my favour. But I thought too soon. A Welsh thorn as big as a carpenter's nail had punctured one of my front tyres. And before I bothered about trying to change that wheel, I thought I must make a fire and get myself something warm inside me. Well, as a good infantryman, I like to think I can make a fire whatever the weather. Doesn't matter how wet it is, you can always find something dry in the lee of the trees. Some driftwood and some nice dry twigs enabled me to get a good fire going, and over the hot embers I cooked some Welsh cakes, those famous little delicacies to a very old recipe of my grandmother's. I brought my mother's old Welsh bake stone with me especially for this very purpose. They really are very fragrant and on a day like this very warming. It had been, I think, quite one of the worst days I've ever been fishing on. And by this time I was soaked right down to my linen. And very thankful I was to get there under the lee of that masonry and have something warm. I'd come quite a long way on this day, all the way up from Wiltshire, and of course this wasn't the sort of weather I'd bargain for and look forward to for so long. Well, next day, as you can see, was a very different kettle of fish. It was bright and sunny, everybody clearing up the mess after all the floods of the day before, and even the hairy Welsh ponies were moved to roister about and enjoy the sunshine and the lark song. I am afraid, though, that my forebodings about the river had indeed come to pass. The Tyvee was sliding down on this day in a real brown flood that made fly fishing absolutely out of the question. For the time being, all I could do was to bide my time and take in some of the pleasurable sights and sounds of this delightful Welsh countryside. Nowhere, I think, have I seen such hairy ponies as these in the Tyvee Valley. The Tyvee Valley in spring is a beautiful place and there's so much to see. The raven is very common here and at one time over a wood up on a hilltop no less than 60 were indulging in the characteristic breeding season aerobatics. It's a wonderful thing to watch. Just see for yourselves now.
the raven breeds right the way down from the Arctic to Afghanistan, but in many parts of England they are not at all plentiful. They are fairly common here in central Wales, and as I say on this particular day, I counted as many as 60 in flight together. And the way they tumble in the air, almost as if they're completely out of control, is quite amazing. It's a thrilling thing to watch, something to delight a man and comfort him for the lack of his fishing. And all the time those strange croaks so characteristic of this great bird. A lot of the Welsh shepherds and hillside farmers use the horse to get about on on these steep mountain sides. And down by the thorn hedge where I'd taken shelter from the rather less bitter wind on this day, a tiny gold crest came foraging among the bare thorns, only a few feet away from me. And of course I got the most extraordinary glimpses of him. This is our tiniest bird, the smallest of all, nowhere near as big even as a wren. And by contrast, overhead, the majestic flight of a soaring buzzard. Seemed to be two pairs of buzzards in this part of the valley, and nearly always there was one or other overhead. They eat rabbits and small creatures and carrion. There's not much a buzzard won't eat. And one joins his mate now on a tree. I thought they were going to mate for a moment or two. They may just have been competing for space on that branch. Well, fishing in Tyvee was out of the question, but near the village of Llandewi Brewi, I found a tiny tributary flowing in. And this tributary stream was also marked on my map as part of the fishing of the Trigaran Angling Association. And so, starting above the boundary line, I began to fish the clear water. And there was a place where some concrete lined the bank, and the yellow hammers were singing their bread and cheese song in the thorns nearby. And from that little pool, I thought there was a very fair chance I might be able to connect with a trout. I had on, of course, my famous Imperial. It's a matter, really, of trying the likely places. The badge there of the Welsh Fly Fishing Association, which they very kindly gave to me after the game fair last year. And sure enough, before very long, I made contact with a very lively trout in this little stream which is called the Avon Piscotoyer. Avon Piscotoyer in the ancient tongue means simply the fisherman's river. And in this particular instance, it was a name which uh, was amply justified. Its trout were very, very pretty indeed, stippled with red, hardly any black spots, fish of about ten inches, very lively. And I was delighted too by the antics of a dipper, a bird which is a close relative of the wren. And it's astonishing how these birds choose to inhabit these very fast mountain streams. There is a reason for this actually, because the dipper who walks about on the bottom of these tumbling streams needs fairly fast water to enable him to keep his head well down and, so to speak, plain under the current and that enables him to forage for his food, the small fish and crustaceans and so on, that he picks up among the stones and the pebbles. A little black and white dipper with a touch of chestnut at the bottom of his tummy. A delightful companion on a fishing day. And that, I think, was number three or number four, I forget which now. It was remarkable how the fish came on midway through this beautiful sunny afternoon, very, very much warmer than it had been on the previous day in that really bitter wind. And finally, there was an old footbridge with a bit of a pool before it. And it was there, I think, well on to about half past four in the afternoon that I finally caught my fifth fish of this unexpected and memorable outing. pretty little fish of the Avon Piscotta, and I looked up to see the skylark in the sky and instead saw one of the inevitable buzzards sailing majestically overhead. A beautiful thing, the buzzard in flight. Well, I was well content with this little basket of five fish. 
looking up, noticed another buzzard and something odd about him. He had a forked tail and there was a good deal of red about his underparts. And that, of course, was no buzzard at all. That was the famous Welsh red kite, that rare bird the sight of which made my day. <laughs>